Good day everyone, we are here to present our topic for the day about the factor affecting crop production for environment. So, what is factor affecting crop production for environment? It is environmental factors that influence the extent of crop agriculture, our terrain, climate, soil properties, and soil water. It is the combination of these four factors that allow specific crop to be grown in certain areas. Okay, so let me tackle about the abiotic factor of environment factor. First is solar radiation. It is the radiant from the sun. Radiant energy is form of energy that is emitted or propagated through space. Radiation may be characterized by either wavelength or frequency. The distance between wave crest is known as the wavelength and is represented by the Greek letter lambda. Biologists commonly express wavelength unit and nanometers where 1 nanometer is equals 1 over 10 meter. Frequency, represented by the Greek letter NU, is the number of waves crest or cycles passing a point in space in one second. When radiation is emitted from a source of interact with matter, it behaves as though its energy is divided into discrete units or particles called photon. The energy carried by a photon is called quantum. To reflect the fact, the energy can be quantized or divided into units. Accordingly, the quantum energy of radiation is inversely proportional to its wavelength, indirectly proportional to its frequency. So, for the next topic is the electromagnetic spectrum. It is the known distribution of electromagnetic energies arranged according to wavelength, wavelength, frequencies, or photon energies. Here are some examples of the electromagnetic spectrum. spectrum. So, slightly longer wavelength are gamma rays, which overlap broadly with the X-ray. Then, ultraviolet radiation has wavelengths slightly shorter than those in the visible or light part of the spectrum and for the infrared radiation has a wavelength longer than those in the visible light so sa radio waves naman ay are still longer kumbaga is dere diretso pa lang next is the solar radiation and plants Solar radiation and plants, it is satisfies two very important needs of biological organism, which is energy and information. Radiation primarily, primarily in the form of light also provides critical information about the environment. Information that is used by plants to regulate movement, trigger development events, and mark the passage of time. Radiation exerts its effect on plants through its three aspects, its quantity, quality, and its duration. So, for the quantity of radiation, it is the solar constant is the total flux of solar energy for unit area and unit time measured on a surface perpendicular to the sun rays above the Earth atmosphere. It is often estimated to be 2.0 calories per square centimeter per minute or 1,394 watts per square meter. However, most recent measurement, measurement give its value at 1,365 to 1,381 watts per square meter. So, the part of scattered downward is called diffuse sky radiation, which the part of that passes through unchanged is called direct beam solar radiation. 
the sum of diffuse radiation and the direct beam radiation is known as global radiation in incident radiation. So, for the quantity radiation, it may be expressed in energy units or or irradiance or an quantum units or photon plant photon flux density. So, sa irradiance, it is the radiant energy received on a unit surface per unit time. For that photon flux naman is density that the number of photon received on a unit surface surfaces per unit time. Um, it is unit mole of photon per square meter per second. For the quality radiation, it is a composition of radiation with respect to wavelength. It is also called spectral composition or spectral energy distribution. The parts of the solar radiation that are principal interest in biologists are ultraviolet, visible in infrared. So let's move to the table 6. The radiation of principal interest to biologists. So the photosynthetically active radiation is radiation of the 400 to 700 nanometers wave band which is within the visible portion. Let's move to the duration of radiation. It is the light duration is known the photo period or day length. In the northern hemisphere, the day is longest and the night shortest in the summer solstice on June 22. And the day is shortest and night longest in the, in the winter solstice by December 22. So the reverse is true in the southern hemisphere, in the, in the equator, day length and night length are always equal whatever the day of the year. Also, for the day length becomes longer in summer, the higher to the north one goes. Example, in, La, in La, Laowag, in Ilocos Norte, so the day length in 13 hours and 13 minutes in the summer solstice. While the general Santo City is only 12 hours and 20 minutes. So let's move on to the next topic about the direct effect of radiation on plant. So for a plant, radiation is a source of energy or photoenergetic photo effect. Uh, in the stimulus regulating development or photocybernetic cybernetic effects. Um, but it can also cause injury or photodestructive effects. Uh, in, photo, in photogenetic process, the energy provide absorption and radiation serve drive metabolic reaction or cause chemical transformation in a manner directly dependent on the amount of quanta absorbs, um, energy-rich compounds can be construct constructed or depotosynthesis. So, molecular structures can be altered or photoconversation uh, or reaction can be accelerated. Uh, also, the direct effect of radiation on plant uh, it in photocybernetic process, receptor substances are chemically altered following uptake of radiation quantum, and this alternation affects the control of metabolism, growth, and development. Important factor here are the timing, duration, and direction of incidence and spectral composition of the light. Radiation has a cybernetic action in a photo simulation of biosynthesis by synthesis. Um, here is an example. Uh, the formation of chlorophyll from precursors and synthesis of atosayanin uh, means it is the, it is adjusting the direction of growth. Uh, next is phototropism. It means in triggering germination and flower 
formation or pot induction. So the radiation affects structure, cellular and whole organism level or the photo, morphogenesis and the syn synchronized development in the cycle with the journal or dark which alternation and the season of the year is the word photoperiodic. So aside from affecting flowering, day length also affect vegetative growth and development. Ang long days promote stem elongation, ang while short days promote the formation and growth of tuber and tuberous root or tuberous roots. Also for the radiation in two regions of the spectrum is effective photocybernetically blue to alt ultraviolet radiation and red to near infrared. So next is the seed germination. Is uh, seed germination is promoted by red light but is suppressed by far red and blue. Stem elongation is promoted by far red but inhibited by red. Also, photodestructive effects occur with extremely high intensity visible radiation or are caused by UV or ultraviolet. In both cases, photogenetic processes are also involved. The damage brought, brought about intense light consists primarily of photooxidation or chlorophyll pigments and UV or ultraviolet below 300 nm or nanometers causes not only photooxidation but also photodestruction or nucle nuclear acid and protein bodies and acute damage uh, to protoplasm next is indirect effect of radiation on plants radiation can affect plants indirectly through its effect effect on temperature and water relation it is also as irradiance increase atmospheric temperature also increase because radiation is the main source of energy for the evaporation of water high irradiance in increases the rate of transpiration a high temperature also increase transpiration because it increase vapor pressure deficit or the capacity of the air to absorb water vapor too much transpiration may result in closure of stomata or wilting which prevent the diffusion of carbon dioxide into the lake so here are the kinds of plant based on light requirements first is heliophyte sun or the loving plants Next is sociopites shade or the loving plants also. Next is sun loving plants that can tolerate shade are called shade tolerant plant or facultative sociopites. Next topic is about the climatic factor. Climatic and weather defined. Weather refers to the state of the atmosphere over short period of time. Climate refers to the all weather conditions that characterize a particular region over a period of time. For this example, um, the variety of living things on Earth is affected and determined by sunlight, temperature, free pressure, moisture, and air movements, which are all together called the climatic factor. Components or element of weather. Uh, weather has six main components or element. Um, here are the temperature, atmospheric pressure, wind, humidity, precipitation, and cloudiness. So together, they describe the weather at any given time. First is temperature. Temperature refers to how hot or how cold the atmosphere is as measured by a thermometer. Meteorologists and scientists who study weather report temperature in two common scales, the Celsius and Fahrenheit. 
the temperature of dry air drops by 1.0 degrees Celsius for every 100 meter rise in altitude. A phenomenon called adiabatic collapse rate. Um, however, air is seldom dry. So, dito malalaman kung gaano kataas or kababa yung init or lamig ng ating panahon. For the effect of temperature, ang um, all chemical uh, physiological and biological process in plants are affected by temperature. Ang um, plants have different responses to temperature but biological activities are limited within 0 degree to 50 degree Celsius. For the lower limit being the freezing point of water and the upper limit the point of thermal denaturation of proteins. For the temperature, responses for most biological processes reflects the temperature dependence of the enzymatic and other chemical reaction involved. The temperature response curve is characterized by three cardinal temperature. First is the minimum temperature which below is a process will not take place. Uh, Second is the maximum temperature, um, above which a uh, process will not take place. And the last is the optimum temperature, that which a uh, process will proceed with the greatest rapidity. For the effects of the rate of chemical reaction, for this, between the minimum of temperature and the maximum temperature, um, chemi chemical reaction in plant became or become faster as temperature increase. Um, thus, any physiological process such as translocation, seed spilling, and sensence is faster as high temperature. Um, here are some examples of effects on the rate of chemical reaction. For the effect on the onset and duration of development stage, ang higher temperature accelerate the rate of development. This means that a given development stage come earlier and is it's shorter at high at higher temperature. For example, the rice variety IR36 flowers in 67 days at 23.5 degrees Celsius but in only 53 days at 28.8 degrees Celsius. Because of this, the time for the rice plant to produce is spikelets is reduced at high temperatures. Rain filling is affected the same way. Uh, with low temperature, the translocation of carbohydrates to the grain is slow but lasts for a longer period. For the degree day, so the concept of the of degree day holds that the growth of plant is dependent upon the total amount of heat to which it was subjected during the lifetime. Expressed as degree day or heat unit, a degree day is a measurement measurement of the departure of the mean daily temperature above the minimum threshold temperature for a plant. If the minimum of the threshold temperature is 10 degrees Celsius as in a corn, uh, and the main daily temperature is 28 degrees Celsius, there will be 18 degree day. So the minimum threshold temperature varies with plants. The total degree the days required for a crop to the temperature is more or less constant. This means that at high temperature, a crop will flower and mature earlier. So, for the thermophoriodicity, a constant temperature during day and night referred to as phototemperature and nectotemperature, respectively 
it compared with the high photo temperature and low nectar temperature, result is considered less grow in tomato. For the night temperature is also the dominant factor in the growth of potatoes, chili pepper, and tobacco, and all the members of the family of the solanaceous or solacin. The quality of fruits and seeds is often affected by thermoperiodicity, the source cons concentration of both sugar cane and sugar beets has in increased with a decrease in night temperature. Next, um, the effect on the evapotranspiration. Um, evapotranspiration is a total of water loss by evaporation from soil and water surfaces or that we call the evaporation and from plant surfaces is called the transpiration. It is a measure of amount of water required by a crop of consumptive use. Um, high temperature increases evapotranspiration and therefore increase the amount of water needed to grow a crop. So, next slide is and doon yung example ng effect on the evapotranspiration and the effect of plant pest. So, next is effect on plant pest. Temperature affects the metabolism, the distribution, development rate, and phenology of plant pest. Ang low temperature limits the distribution of the yellow stem borer. Ang adult male and female months die at 44 to 48 degrees Celsius. So at optimum temperatures, faster metabolism and accelerated development means more insect generation per crop and more so damage. yung sa yellow steam borer ang um, tawag sa kanya is serpopaga insertulas in yung yellow stem borer so here are the example of the two effects on plants so, ito yung example ng epekto sa epekto ng evapotranspiration sa isang halaman. And yung isa naman is epekto ng, is, ng mga peste sa isang halaman. So, ayan, nasisira yung kanyang mga dahon, tas nag-iiba yung kulay niya. So, trans so, transpiration, na-absorb yung kanyang, yung tubig ulan na nagiging sanhi ng pagtaas ng, ng stem. At nagkakaroon din ng soak into a soil. So, yung water vapor, uh, it released from the leaf. So, yun. Na-release niya yung Next is the effect on plant disease. The incidence of rice virus disease, such as rice tongue and yellow dwarf defense, on the temperature requirements of the vector. High temperature is required for a build up of green leaf hopper. This explains the high incidence of tongue at high temperature the 25 to 30 degree celsius and high temperature to 25 to 35 degree celsius especially if accom accompanied by high rela relative humidity favors bacterial leaf blight and bacterial leaf streak um, the same is true for the fungal disease shed blight and false smut. Um, however, um, rice blast and downy mildew required rel relatively lower temperature. So, yes, example na picture dito is 
naninilaw yung kanyang dahon dahil sa mga bacteria na nanggagaling sa hangin or sa or nakadepende pala ito sa temperature that requires of the vector. So, for the last topic that we have is all about the atmospheric pressure. Ang atmospheric pressure is the weight of the atmosphere over a unit area. It is commonly measured with the mercury barometers. Ang meteorologists express atmospheric pressure in millibars or inches of mercury average. Atmospheric pressure at sea level is about 1,013 millibars or 30.4 inches. Uh, it is also dropped as altitude increases. Also dropped when a cyclone approaches an area. So dito sa picture, um, these mole molecules contribute to the pressure or the weight at this altitude. So, ayan. Uh, surface air, air pressure is equals weight of air in column above, above unit area. That's all. Thank